Hello and welcome to Datacast Solutions Introduction to NIME for the Data Analyst. In this chapter we're going to talk about blending data, very specifically using the join node. This is NIME's strength, its ability to take data from any source and merge them together because rarely does all my data come from a single solitary place. Database worlds support four types of joins. The first is the inner join, with each circle representing a table. An inner join means you're looking for rows where the matching key is in both tables. Any records on the left table that don't have a matching row in the right table, those rows from both tables are discarded. In a left outer join, I take all of the records from the left table, whether they match or not. If they find a match in the right table, I include that matching data from the right table. If they don't find a match in the right table, those corresponding values are set to null. A route outer join is the exact opposite. It reversed and does the exact same thing as the left, except missing rows from the left table are dropped and replaced with nulls. And in a full outer join, you're asking for all rows of both tables where any missing data from the opposing table is simply set to null. Now let me show you an example of an actual small data table join so you can see what these look like. So let's take a look at what this looks like. Up in the upper left hand corner, we see I've got an employee table and I've got four employees with countries 1, 4, and 8. And on my right-hand table, I have a country ID, and I've got countries 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, the joining column between these is country ID. When I join on that column, I will produce a result. Now, in the case of an inner join, the first one we looked at, records have to be in both tables. So you'll notice employees 11, 12, and 13, they all had country IDs that were found in the country table, and I'm able to pull the country name. However, employee 14 has been dropped because they are in country ID 8, which isn't in the right-hand table. So it is an inner join. Rows must exist in both tables to be present. Now, in the left outer join, You'll notice the difference is all four records, the employees are still there. All four employees from the left table are still there. But the employee who didn't find a match in the right table, the country name is set to null. And the right outer join, the exact opposite. It's just flipped. And now what we notice is the country of Mexico on the right table, country ID 3, no employee was in Mexico. So Mexico still shows as a country, but there are represented that there are no employees within that country. So now let's go ahead and take a look at how NIME implements this, the join technology. All right, let's take a look at this solution here now and see an example in here. I've got I want to blend some data with one of my reference tables to one of my database tables. So I'm using the legacy database reader and let's look at the configuration of this. <clears throat> you can see I've got the Postgres data and I'm reading all of the data from the public country table. And when I view the output of that, I can see that I've got three columns and 109 rows. And I have another table here. And I'm going to put some documentation here to say that I'm reading the reference country table. This is a file reader. It's a CSV table that I have that we used earlier in the class to show the country master, right? Country name and there you there are two and three digit abbreviations. I want to append all of this additional information to one. Now, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to join the contents of these two tables together. Now, 
first thing I'm going to want to do, just because whenever I'm doing an operation like this, you'll notice the console will eventually get cluttered with lots of information. I like to hit the clear console button right here from time to time because I want all of the most relevant messages to appear for me. So I'm going to clear the console. So I start with a fresh clean slate. And I've already done a search here in the node repository for the joiner node. And I'm going to add a joiner. And then I'm going to connect the file reader and the database reader together. And I'm going to join the contents of these two tables. So I need to configure the joiner. And the first thing I have to decide, is this an inner join, a left outer join? Well, I want, in my case, a left outer join. I want all the records from the first table, even if they don't match to my country reference table. And you'll see an example when we look at the output of why that's helpful. And then I'll add the matching criteria. And you can join on as many columns as you want. It might take two or three or four columns. In my case, I just need to join the country name from this table to the country name of this table. Now, one of the important things you'll notice, these are both strings. You have to match data types. You can't join like the, the country ID, which is a number, of course, to a country ID, which is a name. Um, they must be the same data types in order for the join to match. Now, one other option that I don't do quite as frequently is in the next tab, the column selection. I don't have to bring over all the columns from both tables. There's a lot of columns over here. And so I'm going to actually uncheck this and I'm going to remove all of the columns and say, you know, the only thing I want to add to this is the United Nations name and the two digit abbreviation and the three digit abbreviation. That's all I want to add to this table. All the rest of this about are they a member of the EU8 and their currency code? I don't want all that data. So this is all I need. And I'm going to click OK now. And now the node is configured. And I'm going to right click and execute this. Now I'll take a look at the join data. And now you can see joining on Afghanistan, I've now got the United Nations name for it and the three digit country codes. And I still have all 109 records because it was, it was the left outer join. But I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and look at this. These countries did not have a matching value. So they wound up with the values of null, which means they're in the left table, but they were not in the right table. So I'm going to look over and say, hmm, what and why? What, what would I have had to done? Why isn't, for example, um, the United States? That's a big one. That must be in my country table. What's, um, what's going on with that? So I'm going to stop over here. And I'm going to sort this by country. And I'm going to scroll down to say, well, what happened to the United States? If I scroll down and say, oh, OK, we didn't call it the United States. We called it USA in this table. So if I want this join to work, I'm going to have to do one of two things. I mean, you're going to have to massage the data on one of these tables to translate it. That's what's going to allow it to work. Or in cases where you're prepared to deal with it and say, I've now got missing values here. Now, one of the most common things you're going to then do is to say, I'm going to search for the missing values node. And I will just, again, since this node is highlighted, I'll just double click and it will attach it. To that next node and I'll configure this. Now I can just tell it this is the default what I want you to do for everything. For all strings do this, for all date and times do this. I'm going to come at the column level however instead and say if the United Nations name is null what should I do? Do nothing? 
take a fixed value, take the most recent value, the, the one from the row before, remove the row. I'm going to do a fixed value and say, I'm going to say the United Nations value is unknown. That's how I'm going to handle that missing value. And I'll execute that. Notice it's given me a warning here, the little yellow triangle. And all it's telling me is, hey, column alpha 2 still contains missing values, and column 3 still contains missing values. They're just warning me that you didn't take care of every problem. You just took care of one. But if I look at my output now, now you'll see the ones that didn't match. Now they show the United Nations column is unknown. And that's, again, you, how you handle it is, of course, dependent on the solution that you're going to need. That's it. I can change my join types. I can do whatever I want to make this work. I could apply rules and alter the data here so that they do blend. So I could set transformation rules and we'll cover some of those in the next chapter. But this gives you a good idea of simple data blending. It's joining data from one table to another and you can continue to add another file reader here and join that. So you can bring in data sources from any place you want and merge them all together into a single NIME output. This concludes this chapter of the class. Feel free to move on to the next chapter.